Hi, I'm Sydney Tanaya, and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Keithley Instruments. And today I'd like to discuss with you some of the latest enhancements to the Kickstart Battery Simulator app available in version 2.11.0. Now, in the previous iteration of the Battery Simulator app, you could use a 2380 electronic load to create a battery discharge model, and then use a 2281S battery simulator unit to simulate that model. However, in our latest enhancements, we've added another option for you. By using a Keithley SMU, a source measure unit, you can create battery models, simulate battery models, and unique to SMUs, cycle test batteries, all in a one box solution. This is because SMUs can source and sync in all four quadrants. SMUs that Kickstart supports currently are the 2400 series graphical SMUs and the 2600 series dual channel SMUs, but only channel A at this time. Now today I'm going to show you a demonstration of the latest enhancements to the Kickstart battery app by showing you a battery cycling test, which is unique to SMUs, as I mentioned before. Now a reason a battery cycle test, or you might want to perform one, is like with the lithium ion batteries behind me. They're rechargeable, and as a battery manufacturer or as someone who uses batteries, you want confidence that a rechargeable battery is going to have a fairly long lifespan over multiple charge and discharge cycles. So how a battery cycling test works is Kickstart will have a SMU constantly charge and discharge your battery for a target number of cycles. And either the test is going to meet all those targeted cycles and pass, or you're going to hit a certain capacity target, which shows that the battery's capacity has been prematurely damaged and aged. So on to the demo. So my demo setup is actually pretty simple. I have a 2461 graphical series SMU connected to my lithium ion battery via four wire connections. My lithium ion battery is currently installed in this nice little custom battery test board setup with my sense leads closest to the battery terminals and my source leads furthest away as you would typically do. Now, don't be intimidated by this nice little custom battery board. You don't need one to do these kind of tests. You can actually buy these little battery terminal cases on Amazon, and all you have to do is connect your te test leads to the output leads on those. So now on to my Kickstart settings for this demo. As you can see, I have my battery simulator app open with a 2461 connected via USB. And as I was saying previously, the SMOOs have access to all of the battery test modes available in the battery simulator app, including battery simulation, battery model generation, access to the model browser, and what we're going to be focusing on today in this demo, cycle testing. Now, cycle testing has gives you access to three different functions. You can apply a single charge cycle to a rechargeable battery, a single discharge cycle to any battery to fully discharge it, or again, what we're focusing on is a full charge and discharge battery cycle. Uh, just like with the battery simulator mode, you have access to this nice little indicator of your battery status, as well as an indicator of what cycle count you're on in your test. Now onto the demo parameters. As I said before, I'm connected to a lithium ion battery. So these default parameters aren't gonna change too much, but we'll be making some changes. My voltage empty is 2.5 volts and my voltage full is 4.2 volts. And my rate of capacity is actually going to change to 3.4 amp hours. And that's because I'm getting all of these parameters from my battery's data sheet. And before you start any of these tests, especially if you're using a more volatile battery chemistry, you really wanna make sure that you're checking your battery's data sheet so that all of your parameters are correct. Now moving on to charge cycle settings. Charge cycles give you access to three different charge methods depending on your battery chemistry. I'm using lithium ion, so I'm going to be using hybrid constant current and constant voltage charge. My threshold voltage is going to be the same as my full voltage for the purposes of this demo. My threshold current is going to be 34 milliamps. And my charge level, I'm actually going to change to 2 amps for this demo. 
which is actually pretty aggressive. Um, you wouldn't normally do such a high uh, rate, but for purposes of demo, so that we speed things up, we're going to go pretty aggressive with this test. For my discharge cycle settings, I'm going to be using constant current because the only methods available for discharge are constant current or constant voltage. Again, my threshold voltage is going to be the same as my voltage empty. And then my discharge level, once again, is going to be that nice and somewhat aggressive 2 amps. Now the additional settings. You can think of these sort of like cutoff parameters. Depending on your test, it could be for safety reasons or just to save time. We have our max operation voltage, which again, for the purposes of this, purposes of this demo, I'm just going to set to 4.2 volts. But this is your voltage limit. This is as high of a voltage as is going to be sourced to the battery. So depending on your needs, that could be higher, that could be lower than your voltage full. And then we have our max charge time and max discharge time. These parameters are here to ensure that your battery doesn't overcharge, that it's not taking too long to charge. Perhaps you're a battery manufacturer and you're trying to test a lot for quality. And if that charge time, if it's not becoming fully charged or discharged within the time frame that is correct for your battery chemistry, it's much easier just to throw the test out before it's sitting there kind of <laughs> trying for days and days, right? It's a time saver and a safety feature. Now onto our cycle test settings. I'm just going to use the default target count of 10 cycles. And then our capacity target, this is the other parameter. So the test is either going to stop when it hits this target number and pass because it made 10 full cycles of charging and discharging without the capacity becoming damaged, or it's the test is going to stop when the battery's capacity hits this capacity target and fail. And the capacity target is just a percentage of the battery's original capacity. So right now I have it set to 80%, meaning if Kickstart sees that the battery's capacity is 80% of its original capacity, of its rated capacity, then the test it will stop and it will fail. You can also add post-charge and discharge delays depending on your test needs, and you can choose to start your cycle with a charge cycle or a discharge cycle depending on the state of your battery. Uh, for now, I'm going to select discharge cycle because my lithium ion is currently fully charged. Uh, like I stated previously during the physical demo setup discussion, I'm using four wire sense for that improved accuracy, and my input terminals are my front terminals. Then really all you need to do is hit run app, double check that your parameters are correct, and this is what you want to run with. And once you confirm that, you're up and running and your cycle test is started. So as you can see from the graph here, we can use Kickstart's visualization features to monitor our voltage and our current as the cycle test runs. We are currently discharging the lithium ion battery, like I said before, starting with a discharge cycle, which this here is our voltage discharge curve. Now, Kickstart also has access to statistics, meaning that you could see the area under the curve, which is like your battery capacity. You can also look at your state of charge, your capacity, and your battery energy. And that just makes this all really nice and easy to monitor. Um, the way that this test works is the um, charge or discharge cycle in a hybrid current charge model. So currently we're discharging with constant current. So we're applying a constant current until we reach that minimum uh, current threshold of 34 milliamps. And then with the hybrid current charge, when we hit our charge cycle, it's going to apply the constant current until we hit the threshold and then apply a constant voltage afterward. An example where the Kickstart Battery Simulator app can be useful in testing batteries is IoT devices. Take, for example, a Ring security camera. 
Those are meant to be mounted outside of a residence and not be taken down very often, as well as be exposed to harsh weather conditions at times. That's why it's very important that manufacturers can understand their battery's capacity under that myriad of conditions and that the battery's capacity can survive multiple charge and discharge cycles as these devices are meant to be fairly long-lasting. Where battery simulation and model generation come into play is that while charging and discharging a battery can affect the battery's lifespan, so too can power consumption of your device. Now, if you're a user and you have a secure, mounted security camera, you probably don't want to be having to recharge it every week. And so what you can do as a manufacturer is make a model of the battery that you're proposing to power that device with, and then use the very same SMU you use to model that battery to simulate the battery. Connect the device to your SMU, use the battery simulator to power it, and now you can monitor the consumption of the device in different operation modes over time. So with that example illustrated for you, you can see why the SMU being a one box solution is so valuable for your battery and device consumption testing needs. For more information and other resources, please visit the Kickstart product pages at tech.com slash kickstart.